Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us at Friday Live. Uh, today, well, John is unable to join us um, the session, but we're good to go. We have our dear brand ambassador, George Polides from Greece. And as mentioned yesterday, George will not just be doing a demo, but he's got something prepared about his process. So there's more to look forward to in today's session. Um, just a little, uh, some housekeeping rather. So I think everybody knows that um, in case, especially for our friends in Zoom, in case you have questions, you can just type in your questions in the chat or feel free to unmute your mic. Um, for our friends in Facebook, you can also do the same as you just type in your message in the chat and we'll help read out your questions to George. This is George's second time to be in our weekly live session. So he's very familiar and he's excited to start the show today. Take it away, George. Do you want to say Thank hi to everybody much. first? Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, that is always so nice to be with the Daniel Smith family. This is uh, this is really a family. So hi from Greece to everybody. Hey. Um, so as always, we want to begin by sharing um, just a few slides. We'd like our audience to directly connect with you, George, even as the show carries on. And even mm -hmm. after the show, we want everybody to be connected. So here are share screen. So in case you want to connect with George, George is in Instagram. His handle is George Politis underscore AWS underscore RI. Of course, he's also in Facebook. Well, that is uh, his handle, George.Politis.7. The next couple of slides, George, are some of your artworks. And I know we have another slide prepared for today's session, but if you could just share some, a line or two about each of the artworks here would be good. We start with this one. Okay, so, um, all right. This is uh, an old blue door um, found in Sandorini. This is one of the subjects that I uh, found there because Sandorini is full of uh, uh, beautiful things for any kind of painter. And uh, I find, apart from the beautiful scenery with uh, the blue and white uh, houses and uh, churches, I find all rusty things uh, that are uh, really familiar to me because I like to paint um, texture. And this is one of the paintings where I use a lot of Primatec colors and um, I'm trying to depict the uh, texture in uh, in an old door. Okay. Right. This uh, this is one of the paintings that is right now in Louisiana for the annual international exhibition of the uh, Louisiana Watercolor Society, and it is a piece of uh, old machinery found in another. Um, village in Greece. So um, a lot of the stuff that you see here is totally imagined and the texture is mostly imagined. Uh, the, the structure of the machinery is kept, but other than that, all the cables that you see, the black uh, shapes all over. Um, and as I said, uh, even the colors or the uh, uh, the textures are mostly imagined because this is how I prefer to paint. I uh, sketch my subject and then I don't follow any photo at all. I'm trying to um, create my, my own world and my own universe when I paint. So it is uh, mostly like that. This is what I will try to do today as well in a smaller scale. Okay, I will use part of this painting. So I will use um, part of that dome church in the painting that I'm doing today. Um, even that, if you saw the photo uh, of the village where we paint a lot and they have fantastic landscapes and buildings, 
So uh, even that is changed because I always want to tell the viewer something. And then I start with a question that I pose to myself, what do I want to tell the viewer? And um, where do I want to draw the eye of, of the viewer to? And uh, then uh, a lot of stuff like, uh, how can I create um, colorful shadows? Um, how can I mix on the paper? What is the role of the contrast of the uh, diagonals and so on? So many things to speak about uh, color choices and compositional choices. Another one. So if one saw the real thing, uh, you would you would question a lot of my choices. But the thing is that when we present a painting, this is what we do. We present a painting and nobody is there to um, see both of the painting and the photo next to each other so that um, uh, the viewer can compare. And that is not the point. So what I want to do is to create a successful, interesting painting with a lot of contrast and I can directly, I, I can direct the eye of, of the viewer in certain areas. So, or if I have more than one centers of interest, then I can make them be compatible and um, uh, support each other. Once again, a Roman church because uh, Sandorini was uh, under uh, Italian, uh, Venetian occupation for many years. So um, this is um, a Roman Catholic uh, monastery in, uh, in, a, in a village that I love very much. And um, this is uh, a church and I have painted a lot of um, buildings. Actually, uh, this year I was in Watercolor Live and I painted another uh, scenery from this castle with the monastery, the Venetian castle with the monastery. And um, you see that Sandorini is not only blue and white, it has a lot of yellows, it has a lot of um, old walls, textured things, uh, colorful, colorful things. This is why I love it. All right, this is the last um, slide for the first set. Do you want us to share the slide for the composition, George, or? You... Yes, we can start with this before I start okay. with uh, speaking, yeah. Okay, here we go. The other one is here. So as I say here, it is, not actually only composition, but choices, uh, name it color choices, compositional choices, um, things that I like to include or uh, exclude, uh, to add or um, take out. So it is my way to interpret and finally how to create in, uh, instead of just copying what I see. Okay, can, yeah. So this is um, this is a piece of metal on um, an old door and wall in uh, in another place in Metsovo. That's um, uh, a village uh, on the mountains uh, in in Greece, and I think it it is really interesting because of the diagonal shape and the rust in the metal. I like some of the elements that I find that I find on the door. But other than that, I think that the, the wall is really not interesting because it is just cement. And then this is how I interpret it, how I change it in the next slide. Yeah, so you, you can see totally different colors. I keep the main idea, but then I change the wall. I add some elements like um, the number, that could be the number on the uh, house there. You see that I add a lot of, a lot, but a lot of texture that is not really there. Many times people ask me, where do you find so much texture in your subjects? And the answer is, I do not, I just create it. So it's, it's not 
something that you can find ready to copy and paint. It is something that you imagine. And that's what I love to do, to create texture, colors. You see that the colors are changed. I like some of the shapes found in the previous slide and at the left part of the door. So I, um, I multiply them, I create more like that. And then I emphasize on the texture of the wood and the texture of the uh, of the rust of the metal and so on. Of course, a lot of contrast. And here you can see um, both of them one next to the other. So you can compare for yourselves. Beautiful. That's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we can move to the next one. So this is another old door. You, know, you understand that I like subjects like that. And I find that um, some of the structure is interesting. I do not like the, ver the vertical. Of, of course, when I, I sketch, I'm trying to do several sketches, horizontal, vertical. I try to change the rendering. Uh, several elements, and in the next, the next, next sketch, you will see how I change that to this. Perhaps simpler, uh, but with the light, I feel a little bit more dr dramatic, and bringing the light in the center of the uh, painting, and thus creating my own story out of this door. Of course, you see so many other things that are changed in this door. Can we move on? Another one to, to show what you can do out of your imagination. So out of uh, this old window that was covered by this, I, I'm not sure what, I create something totally different, imagined. So a window coming through. Um, this yellow is probably wooden, I don't know what uh, facade becomes metallic with a lot of texture, but this is my own world. So I can create whatever I want. And if I would not show the original work, the original photo, you would not be able to tell if that would be real or not. I mean, if that that I painted would be real or not. Let's move. This is one of my most successful paintings in the last three years. It received five international awards in major shows internationally, internationally. And you can see that there is a lot of texture, but now you will see the real photo out of that, that I used as the reference. You can see that the overall structure is the same, but a lot of, can we move to the next slide? But then you can see also that I zoom in a certain area, I change the size of some of the uh, elements. Of course, I change the, lightning, the lighting, I change the colors, and of course, I add a lot of texture. So this is why I'm saying I never try to copy a photo. I'm trying to create something out of uh, what I see. And you can see once again, a lot of imagined uh, shapes at the back as well, because um, I am trying to use them in order to direct the, uh, the eye of the viewer in uh, my, areas that I consider myself as the senders of interest. Okay. I guess this is it. Yes. So thank you very much, Ethel. Thank you for that. And now I will, uh, if, if I can start, I will uh, explain what I will do here. So when I started, um, uh, thinking about what to present, I thought about um, uh, a composition, and this is how I start, usually. I started with a composition where I said, okay, let me use that kind of a dome and chairs that I have painted in the past. 
but let's add some texture in the foreground. So I am um, I'm adding a wall that we can decide. I can decide if it is going to be painted white or yellowish, like in Sandorini. Most usually they are either white or yellow ochre, the walls. And then to add some more interest and texture, I'm adding a shadow. Then uh, part of uh, a tree or a plant that comes from behind that wall. And so I have the sky, one plane, the church, a second plane, the tree, a third plane in the foreground, the building, and so on. And um, as that was the decision, then I want to explain that things like that can be found in reality, although I'm telling you that I'm not using that in the beginning. So I'm just explaining that for whatever I decide, there is some possible reference. And here you can see a wall that is a yellowish wall with a shadow like that. Although in my painting, it is in the opposite side. And then this is another beautiful photo in Sandorini where you can see a blue dome and the plant that comes um, from one side of a wall. This is my, let's say, interpretation of that in my painting. And then this is the main painting that I suggested that I will use uh, painted before and exhibited and used in a demo. And this is that part of the painting. So you can see all of them in this area. And then let me explain. I will decide to paint this area ochre and use some of the granulating colors as well to suggest some texture in this place. Then I can add some shadow here, no matter how. The plants will be, actually, I have already prepared that. I have collaged tissue paper and orion oriental Asian paper with fibers here using acrylic made medium. So I will use that um, in order to paint um, with watercolor on top of collaged paper. And then um, I have not masked the um, cross, which should remain white. Normally I do not mask my whites, in that case, because I have to work rather fast, it would be a little bit wiser to do that, but I wanted to show, to show you how I work, so I normally do not mask. Then I have to decide about the, uh, the light that comes from that direction. So this is, will be, this, this is uh, let's say, in value number one or even zero, this will be something like two or three. This is going to be three or four or a little bit more than that, five or six in value. And so the light comes from the right part, part to the left part. This area will be mostly in shadow, but I have to create it in a meaningful way that you will see some interesting uh, color combinations in this area. And although that was not like that, I'm creating a blue door and a dark window. We, we can decide if that will be blue or just dark or whatever, because we can decide about such things as we paint. So that's the main idea. And this is how I try to, um, to create my paintings. Apart from that, I can see that I have a nice diagonal in this way, some milder diagonals like that. This helps the curve um, so that we don't have too much intensity because diagonals 
give some more energy to the painting. As I have a couple of diagonals in this sense, I will create my sky um, using some diagonal shapes in the opposite direction so that I create some um, interest, some conflict between these diagonals. But on the other hand, this conflict um, gives some equilibrium to the painting. So it is uh, in my paintings, a lot of diagonals like that, and then like that, and then some horizontals and some curves. It is a combination of all these things because uh, all these things create a dynamic um, equilibrium and balance in a painting. George? We yes, have please. two questions here about the app. Just now you showed us um, your drawing, basically the outline. Um, our guests are wondering whether you're using a certain app. That, that is called Notability. Okay. And uh, I'm using this uh, for my lessons, not, not anything else. It's not that I create here. Sometimes I might create here some uh, some ideas, but this is mostly for physics because I'm a science teacher. So you see, it's <laughs> mostly for my science lessons. Okay. That's the question. So I can, I can start with the painting, right? Yes. Okay. So um, of course, you know what colors I use. Um, I have been using Daniel Smith colors for uh, more than 20 years. Um, I think long before uh, John Cogley uh, took over there. Uh, I have been using uh, Daniel Smith colors before 2000, before uh, you know we changed our century. And um, as about um, brushes, I use Skoda brushes, several brushes like the Perla, like the Versatile or the Barocco. And lately, perhaps you saw that I uh, gave a demo with this fantastic large brass, this Ultimo Evolution number 20, Escoda, which can be used really to do anything in, in a painting, starting from the large uh, shapes and finishing to the details because it has such a fantastic tip. Okay, so um, let's decide how we start this painting. And I would start with the sky. So I'm preparing some of the phthalo red, um, no, phthalo blue, red shade uh, blue and cerulean blue for my sky. And then I would wet my sky of course it doesn't matter if i go into the plant area right now but on the other hand why should i do it one thing i have found over the years is that there is no actual mistake in watercolor we can um, correct almost anything. Of course, now with uh, Daniel Smith uh, watercolor ground and with um, gauze, things are even easier. But even before that, I had found that it is um, easy to correct actually any problem. It is not like the years before when they said that um, watercolor is done on the spot and if you do a mistake it is finished so you saw that i did not uh, wet my surface to the cross i left some small part uh, from the sides because um, this is easier to control my sky like that Okay, and let's start with uh, cerulean blue. The thing is to create something that is 
really transparent. So you see now I am painting in the area that was kept dry. When I was wetting the paper, I did not wet this area. So this is why I did not do it because I would not want the color to diffuse into that part. Now, this part will be the darker shape of my uh, dome. So I need this part to be fairly lighter. That is a decision based on my overall um, idea of keeping uh, my um, painting with strong contrasts, like when you see a chessboard and you have um, dark squares next to light squares. So this idea is what I call in my paintings the chessboard effect. George, what kind of paper are you using? And you can tell us about the board that it's stapled to, please. Yes, this is a uh, Bao Hong paper, but uh, it could have been any paper really that uh, would be 100% um, cotton. This is what matters mostly for me to have a very, very good quality paper. From then on, I think I can adjust to any pa paper in the world. But um, yeah, this is this is it. So now I'm, um, and the board is um, a board that I bought in um, in Canada. I cannot remember the name really, but it is a watercolor board, perhaps aqua board. I'm not sure. Thank you. If we see more of the painting and less of the palette. <laughs> yes. uh, sorry. Thank you. I'm, thank you. I'm moving. Uh, yeah. Thank you for letting me know that. I was out outside. So now I'm trying to give this direction, as I said, some kind of diagonal feeling to the painting. And um, this area has to be fairly darker. So I'm adding more color here. Why is that? Because this part will be the lightest part of the dome. If you remember what I said, the chessboard effect. So now that it is almost done in the main idea, I will build the board like that. And I will try to give the diagonal feeling as I'm using gravity to do that. So I will give some diagonal strokes. Actually, I'm only helping the color flow on the uh, wet surface. And as you see, I'm trying not to cover the whole part of the sky, but I'm leaving some parts lighter and some parts receive more paint. Then I'm creating a thirsty brass. A thirsty brass is when you, rem you remove the excess water from the, uh, from the brass. And then you remove the excess water, you pick up the excess water from your uh, paper. I think that it is fairly okay. Perhaps I can add a little bit more blue color here. Less as I'm going closer to the um, horizon area. But most important, it's not that that um, directs my decision to have a lighter area here, mostly because this will be darker, darker, and so on. So this is why I decide, actually I can, I can leave that like this, no problem. So the sky is almost never, as I say, a star in my paintings. I do not want to have uh, too much action. I only want to have uh, some transparent colors and um, give some direction that helps me with my overall composition. So now um, I see that I have some excess water here that could create some problems. I will pick it. This is why I'm saying I need 
usually more time to think and uh, less time to paint. Mm -hmm. Of course, when problems like this might be created, like uh, a background uh, flowering, corny flowers and so on, there are always some ways to recover. So I could recover by using probably some um, uh, collars or some lifting or whatever. I don't I don't know. Anyway, so that's it done. The sky is done. I can move uh, to the um, area of the wall. So I will start wetting the wall. Of course, as this part of the sky is still wet, I will try not to interfere too much with it. So I'm leaving a very, 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 very small line between the area that I wet and the sky so that the color doesn't diffuse from one place to the other. Of course, I can change this later so that this is not visible. Actually, I do not need any more than that because the lower part is going to be um, in shadow later. So here I will start introducing some color like Queen Acridone Gold. You see that I still have my paper tilted so that I just add some color on the top and it um, moves because of gravity downwards. And I turned the paper so many times from one direction to the other because now I wanted to, to add some more color here. I'm adding, oops, sorry, some more color here. This is burnt sienna that I'm adding here. Let's remove the excess water from the tape because it might go into the sky area. That would not be wanted right now. Of course, I could save it later, but why should I pose more problems? So now let me speak about the symbols of colors, uh, something that I like to suggest. So um, Queen Acridone Gold is a symbol of the light for me. Then burnt sienna is a symbol of warming my colors. Then I have colors like um, burnt tiger's eye or piemontite that add texture to the painting. But all that is done, as you see, on the paper directly. I can add some piemontite very lightly. I mean, very lightly even lighter than that. So I'm adding water and more water. And then just a suggestion of that color. This keeps everything transparent. You see that I'm moving closer and closer to the sky area, but I'm trying not to interfere with that. I like the fact that here I have some texture already created. Let me do some more. some irregular shapes like that. And I love it like that. I don't do anything more. Let me give another symbol of the reflection of this of the sky. So let me add some blue color here and there. Everything is done on the paper. Only suggestions and then the color does everything for me. So as this is done, I want to paint against this edge. So I'm turning the paper like that because my brush can move in a freer way like this. Let's add some Piemontite genuine here. Let's add some burnt sienna here. This is the area of the saddle, remember? So I can go bolder here because I can always create um, a darker but still transparent shape in this area. 
So the dark shapes must still be colorful. And this is why I'm adding colors like uh, Queen Acridon Gold and this uh, Piemontite Burnt Sienna in the, in the area that will finally be my shadow in this wall. So you see, I am really satisfied with, with that for the moment. Of course, it's not the finished, uh, the finished thing. It is only an underpainting, but it is what I need from my underpainting to have some suggested texture. And as this will start to um, uh, dry, it will be more and more visible. And then I can add even more texture if I want. But for the moment, the decision is very simple. I want to have a very, very light um, wall, very transparent wall, and be able to use it as a canvas to speak about texture here. All right, so as this is done, and as long as I have areas that are still dry all over, all around, I can move to another area. I would easily work in this area. I can work in the area of the dome. Um, that would be a little bit more dangerous when I would go and touch the far left part of the dome where uh, you have the sky that is still not uh, totally dry. So anyway, I can start with that part. Let's add some very, very light and diluted uh, layer of um, cerulean blue a color that I love because, because it is transparent, it is granulating. Uh, I use it so much in my Sandorini paintings. But again, we said that I don't like to have something that is just one color. So let's suggest warmth. What is the symbol of warmth? Let's say burnt sienna. Of course, not only that, but that is one choice. Let's suggest some light. So let's add some Queen Acridone gold and let it uh, flow in there. If I want to suggest some more warmth, let's take a little bit of Mayan orange and add some Mayan orange. But you see, I'm not adding that color all over, just a touch and leave it there. Then the rest is done by the watercolor. So I will move to the next part. Let's use our symbols. Now I'm going into an area that is somehow darker as we said so it is a possibility i have to be careful with the edge first of all so you see i'm turning the paper to have better grasp better control over that area and then i can add here some texture it seems to be dark but in reality it is still very transparent this is my way to suggest that we still have texture here. Then I still have to speak about the colors of the sky and we are painting Sandorini. So we are expecting blue colors all around. So these colors should be reflected in that part of the wall. I'm careful to keep this white because this is my intention to have that part as white. So I'm turning the paper and I'm working carefully. Now, as this is white, I must suggest it is white. So how can I suggest better than giving a fairly darker color against it? 
let's say it again. What are we using here? We are using the chessboard effect. So I will go to the other area. Now I have to be more careful. So I will only add some color like blue color and burn sienna as an underpainting, but I'm going to save this area to paint later more. So I will not paint everything in detail and I will not mess too much with the, uh, the edges because the edges can become later darker and I can change everything as long as it stays transparent. My goal is accomplished. My uh, my painting is on track. The difficult thing and difficult the problem is actually when you lose the transparency and you try hard to recover it. Of course, this is always possible again. But why should I create more problems to myself? So right now I will only. Take a moment to do something that might be useful to you later. I will take a close-up photo of the seemingly really dark area here. And you will see it is not so dark in reality. And I will take a photo of the texture created here so I can share later um in the uh in facebook uh, in daniel smith's uh, page but you can see already here that what appears to be really dark is not so dark in reality it is transparent and even the pencil lines can be seen through easily and while you can see details beyond what you have painted, when you can see colors of previous layers or pencil lines or things like that, this means you have a really transparent layer and this is what is mostly important. So let's move before I use my hair dryer if necessary, which will be necessary. Let's move to the lower part of the building and you see once again that I'm wetting the whole thing, but not up to the pencil line. <clears throat> and now <clears throat> as I have these bluish windows and these must be visible later, so I don't want to create something totally uh, <clears throat> dark here. I will try to keep that area fairly light. Sometimes when I paint walls like this, I am going darker and darker because I add beautiful colors like uh, bloodstone that give texture. Okay, that could be a choice, but then the blue color will not be easily seen. So this is why I will keep this a little bit lighter. It is still fairly cold, cold for Greece, so I'm sorry for that. Okay, so uh, let's start painting. And what color should I use? Uh, that's a decision. So you see, I don't have any, any preconceived ideas about these things. Let's start about suggesting light coming through. Then let's repeat some warmth in the colors. The board is inclined. All right, what else then? in order to have something 
compatible with the rest of the painting. I'm adding some cerulean blue. You see how I'm adding my cerulean blue. It is flowing. I'm deciding not to add cerulean blue close to, and now adding only water, not so close to a window or a door that is a decision to be painted in blue color. So why should I give blue next to blue? That would not be a good decision. Let's speak about some um, interesting texture. So let me add some uh, Piemontite here. And now I'm adding some water to let it help it flow downwards. Now, a good question would be, will the tree become lighter or darker than this area? That is our decision. And this is up to us to decide what to do. Okay, when I'm painting shadows, the color that I love really the most is moon glow. So let me add some moon glow, but not too much because this time I have decided to keep that lower part lighter. You see that I'm having the board more and more inclined because I will be adding color mostly at the top and then the color will flow downwards. Now I'm adding water only. You see it is water only that I'm adding. Okay, so um, let us think. I have enough dark color, perhaps I do not have enough texture. So, uh, and perhaps some darker color here. Let's add, first of all, some moon glow here because it helps with the contrast of this white area. I'm not painting anything that is uh, following a photo, of course. I'm trying to think about my plan and my plan is to bring light to this area and bring some interest to this area. So my decisions, my color decisions, my value decisions are based on that only. Let's take some uh, blue, uh, phthalo blue. That is a dangerous color because it is more dominant. I'm adding some color here. And perhaps here. repeating in some areas. And then finally, before I stop with this wall, let's create some more texture by adding the heavy artillery of texture. Which is the bloodstone. I think this is the color that uh, I use in any painting that I do. But you see again, I use it not so much. I use it especially in the areas that have some meaning for me and the meaning for the moment is the contrast. Okay. All right, I think that will be it. Perhaps, perhaps I can add some cerulean blue in this area. Cerulean blue gives light in, uh, in the shadow. So that is an, um, a shadow area like the other one. And although this is still rather wet. I can paint next to it carefully. 
using colors like before. This, this time I did not wet this area because I have to be more careful with the uh, edges next to the other wall. Small and simple decisions like that always help us go step by step from one area to the other. Always evaluating what do I have next, what do I want to say, and so on. So here I need some warming, like in the area next. You see a repetition of colors is very important. Otherwise, it will look fake. It will look unreal. All right. I think that I have the basis uh, of everything uh, done. So I will take one moment to dry it and I will continue. I love how George shared his composition and design and how he would bring different elements from different photos into creating the image today. And I also loved in his slideshow how he was to, able to bring to life his artworks and make them so much more dynamic than the actual photo references were. Just beautiful work. If, if you were talking to me because of the hair dryer, I was, I was not able to hear anything. Well, we, were, we were talking about you. Okay. About your, about your colors and or how you explain things. We just love that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's continue with the part of the trees. And you can see that I have collaged. I'm not sure if you can see, but... I'm trying to show from, yeah, here you can see the collaged tissues that give a 3D effect. So I have several pieces of tissues. Um, they are um, several kinds of tissues like, let me show you. Like that. This is oriental tissues that have fibers inside. I'm not sure how you can see, but you see the fibers going out. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it here, the fibers going out and so on. And then symbol, symbol, kitchen, tissue paper. All that is collaged on top of the, the watercolor paper using uh, acrylic made medium uh, as, uh, the, as the glue, let's say, because when it dries, it dries transparent and you can only see the color of the papers. So when I, uh, I start painting on that, the first thing I would do would be to use colors like this is Mayan um, yellow. The other thing was Mayan, uh, not, uh, it was quinacridone gold. And I'm creating with less water, almost like a dry brush, some marks on the paper, because like this, the color goes to the uh, top of the paper and leaves them uh, valleys untouched, so you create some texture like that already. So this is the first step, and we have to be patient with this technique, so that would be 
what I would do as my first step, nothing else. Of course, if I have to speed up, I could add some greens, but let's not do it. Let's go the way I normally paint. Um, as this part was not painted before, let me add some blue color for the sky. Okay, this is done very lightly. I don't want it to be strong. Let's move to the dome area and the dome has to have some um, uh, light, very light uh, blue to the right part and go really dark to the left part. So I will use, let's say, mostly water at this part. So let me start with water. And then let's start adding lightly some um, cerulean blue. I'm keeping my board tilted in a way that the cerulean blue will only flow downwards and not go upwards to the area that is reserved as light. I'm adding more water up there because this keeps everything wet and fresh in this lower part. So I don't risk anything with uh, uh, hard edges. And I'm able to add more and more color progressively in this area because this is still wet and it can receive it can receive water and paint like that. Adding again more color here. This is a touch of phthalo blue. So you see that I'm adding more and more color as I go to the left part of the painting. Let's go with some Indian Throne blue. Oops, that was too much. Okay, that's not a problem. Let's remove some or make it um, I dilute it fast and make it mix with the rest. It is important to have this gradation so that it seems logical that the light gradually becomes less and less. Okay, so let's take some moon glow now and mix with uh, the blues, moon glow mainly. I have to go bolder up there. So this is why I'm going with more color. Remember, it is always the chessboard effect. It must stand out against the sky. So I must go on and create some more gradation in this part of the painting. Okay. Let's take some um, Mayan dark blue. So even darker now. I hope you have not all fallen asleep if I'm painting very slowly. Now I have to be careful with the edge here and I'm turning the paper because like that I can control the edge. George, uh, which brand of masking fluid you are using there? Masking fluid? There is no masking fluid here. Uh, how did you leave the, uh, the tree part? 
I was painting always around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I even for the cross, I have not used masking fluid. Um, although I said perhaps it would be a good choice and a wise choice for a painting like this that goes fast to use it, but I wanted to show you that normally I do not use it. I'm now adding some bloodstone, even bloodstone in the blue dome. But you see the overall thing, the overall effect is not changing. I mean, you can always see what you want to see and what I want to show that we have a blue dome. And this is why the colors are not so important in my paintings. I say that it is the values that are important. And many times I'm using colors that should normally be uh, a little bit unexpected in some areas, but who cares if I can create the effect that I want of a um, blue, light blue to dark blue dome like that. What is the problem if I use colors like bloodstone or moon glow or whatever else? And I think that for the moment it looks okay. So I don't want to mess too much with that. I have to move to an area that is um, dry and I can paint the shadow part of the wall here. So let's go there and start with the color that mostly symbolizes shadow for me. But you see how diluted it is, how diluted. You see the, uh, the bead of the water that is created. This is how diluted this is. Um, so I'm adding some moon glow for the start. And then let's remember what is the message uh, that I want to give. Why did I decide to paint this subject like that? Because I wanted to speak about texture and about colorful shadows and then about um, contrasts. So let's add some Piemontite at the edge because I want to have a colorful shadow. Let's go at the edge and add some color. Let's add even some Mayan dark blue up there. And then let's have some water and paint with water. So the inner part should glow. Let's go back to the top part and create more texture, which is bloodstone. Let's make this bloodstone flow downwards to create some interesting paths into the lighter part of the shadow. But this is it. And then let's suggest that we still have blue colors all around. So I'm adding some blue touches, symbols of colors, very simple painting, very simple way of deciding how to paint. Okay, and then water, as I go into the shadow, I need to suggest more light. And the question would be light in the shadow, of course, light in the shadow. And then now a decision is, should that be darker than that wall or lighter? Okay, I decide to take it as darker. So I'm going a little bit darker here, not too much as much as is necessary. So I may go one step, it's time, darken it more and more 
till I decide it is done. And of course, I can finish that with the next layer. So I don't have to decide now how dark I go. The point is, am I still um, having a transparent watercolor? If it is so, then anything is okay. Everything is okay. And I think it is still very transparent, so I don't have any problem. You will see, well, I'm not sure how much time we have. <laughs> um, I, I'm taking too much time to explain, perhaps. I don't know mm -hmm. if you like it or not. I think we can have another five minutes, George. And of course, yes. unfinished artwork can uh, be posted on socials and we'll be happy All to. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So one thing that I, I always say is that I'm trying to suggest that this is a light thing. <clears throat> so I will invent some ways to create the feeling of transparency. So sometimes I will create some lines starting from inside the shadow and going outside the shadow. I will create some effects inside here. So in we, using several uh, tricks, I will suggest later that this is still a very transparent shadow on top of that wall. All right, so now let's move to another area that is to be, let's say, my door. And my first decision would be to go with, once again, a light blue color. So it is mostly cerulean blue, but then as I'm still with um, a very, very light color here, I'm adding some moon glow at the top. So it is again, the edges that I'm painting. Let's take some blue and give a touch of thalo blue. Let's take some Mayan dark and have a touch of Mayan dark. But you see, my decision is that I'm going darker next to the edge because this is where the eye is drawn always. The eye wants to see clear subjects, clear edges, and then I'm deciding what do I have to, to do to create that effect. Would that be normally the case with a door? I don't know. And frankly, I do not care. Actually, in, in, the, in the real thing, there was no door here or, or window. So as everything is imagined, I can do whatever I need to do in order to create an interesting effect. And now I left this part, this left part as fairly lighter because I want to create the feeling of a darker shape of the door. So I have two adjacent areas that are different in values. That is the thing. We do not rely on lines in order to suggest the various shapes, we must create the feeling of depth and the feeling of uh, uh, adjacent areas, neighboring areas that meet each other and are different using different values. This is what I'm trying to do. And this is done mostly at the edges. So if the wall would be dark, I would create a lighter door or window. If the um, wall is as it is here, fairly light, but fairly it is actually very light for a shadow wall, then I'm using more color in the area of the door and window. And of course, while it is still wet, let's suggest because that is only the first layer, some warmth. Or texture in this area. 
I have always the time to change anything later. What I do not want to have is a dull uh, painting where you can see one color expected by the viewer. This is a normal mistake a lot of people do, but this is not what we should do. So you see, I have a colorful door right now, but the feeling is always that the darker colors accumulate at the right part, the left part is lighter and so on. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, again, I'm asking about the time because um, I'm taking too much time, but I'm, I think I am explaining my process step by step so that it is easier to understand how I think and how I plan things. Can I continue or do I stop because I think it I is... I think we can carry on, George, and we just wrap up at um, in three, right. four minutes. Like we Excellent. Excellent. Four minutes. So now what I would do next is go to the dome and create the feeling of a darker wall here. So I'm starting again at the edge. And once the message is given, I'm using water, just water, because the inner part well, I can afford that it stays lighter. Actually, it's not only that I can afford, I want, I want it to stay lighter because this way I retain my transparency. I keep my transparency here. And, okay, let's add some interest, some, highlight, a red highlight, and probably some blue highlight. But you see, these are just touches, and that is done. And no more than that. I'm not trying to create a fuss. I'm not shouting about these colors. You will hear me saying many times, I'm only whispering with these colors just enough so that the viewer can spot. Then I'm going here, starting another dark part, darker part of the wall. So I'm going fairly darker at the edge. But once you can see that this part of the wall is darker, then I do not need to go too dark in the rest of the area. So once again, using water, only water, just water, you can see no color at all. Bring the color inwards, whatever was on the paper. And then once again, let's go at the edge and make the dome stand against the um, the sky, so a darker edge to the left. So what do I, I accomplish like that? You can easily see the dome against the sky. You can easily see that part of the wall that is darker comparing to this part of the wall. And you can see a very transparent wall. So using this, change in values within one shape only, I have managed to create my message against that wall, against the sky, and the transparent walls inwards. George, you've got 30 uh, seconds to do something with the tree or the greenery. Yes, I can continue it's... with that. So let's go with that part and create some light green. So it's only the next step. And I will start seeing things and moving my uh, brass to follow what I have with the fibers. 
So I'm trying to understand what is collapsed here. And I'm uh, leaving the 3D collapsed, let's say, areas as lighter. You can see that. You can see that here. So now it is mostly like painting in negative using ideas of what I see. And I would do that here. Once I create some effects here, I will see what happened. You see, I can see here some, oops, sorry. I can see here some lighter shapes created. You see, I can see lighter shapes created. So I move randomly with my brush, trying to exploit, to find how the uh, paper was collaged. And when I do that, my next step, of course, normally I should leave that um, dry, but then my next step would be to start creating shapes within the shapes. So I would start carving, let's say like a sculptor, shapes out, like creating the feeling of some leaves. Of course, I'm not painting the leaves, but I would start creating shapes that would give the feeling of the leaves and perhaps go bolder at the edge. Of course, this is one decision or the other decision would be to create the sky darker and uh, that part left yellow. But already you can see that we are giving the feeling of uh, leaves that are greener, darker, lighter, perhaps still white. And step by step, I will try to create something that will finally look almost like three-dimensional. Having started with this technique some time ago, some years ago, um, I introduced lately something different, which I call the fake collage technique, something that I use in my, um, easier to understand when you are with me in, in the workshop. So uh, it is, um, like faking this effect of the uh, fibers, but without any fibers at all, just creating the feeling of that. So that's that's how I would that's how I would go. I would try to create things. I'm spotting, let's say, this white shape here. I would fragment it. I would create another shape, then. Even this green shape that seems dark right now, I will darken the adjacent areas so that I leave a lighter green here and then connect some of the darks and then bring them down here and so on. So I will imagine things. It's totally a creative process. And like that, you will see the leaves popping out step by step. That's how it would work. George, there was a question, or a few questions about your collage process. I believe you said you used an acrylic medium. And yes. also, do you put ground on top so that the paint shows oh, on no. your collage? Oh, I, I just put acrylic medium with uh, the, the fibered uh, paper or the tissue paper, and then I paint with watercolor on top of the acrylic medium that is already there. But this is the beauty about um, uh, and strength of these colors, Daniel Smith colors, that you can create effects like that on top of acrylic. Can you imagine? This is what I love. And you can have those beautiful transparent effects on top of acrylic. Thank, thank you. Everybody really appreciates your narration that you can tell us your painting process as you paint. It was a wonderful demo. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Come back again. <laughs> Thank you. Come back again. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Enjoy. 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 Brilliant again. Super for the end. Cheers to you. Bravo, bravo. Cheers, George. Cheers. Cheers, George. Bye, everyone. Thank you, George. Bye.